This ship is a work in progress, so all studs are subject to change. Hello everyone, and welcome to another game of World of Warships. Today I'm taking a look at the Lasso, an upcoming Tier 7 Premium Soviet Cruiser. And well, I'm terribly sorry if I'm mispronouncing ship names. Now here I'm on the map Okinawa, it's a 3 point domination game, it's tier 9 so it's pretty bad matchmaking. But we will see what we can do here. I'm moving here towards the sea cap, we have a destroyer here, there's an Atlantic moving in, so probably going to raid our Kitakase. And yeah, it looks like we are losing this cap here. Now. What is the lasso? The lasso, I mean, it looks like a Chapayev, and it's kind of a Chapayev. But... A bit downgraded, because it's tier 7. So it ends up being pretty close to the shores, the regular tier 7 Russian cruiser. Now, compared to the shores, this ship does have worse DPM, like you have a 1 second longer reload, but... In exchange, you get more hit points. I think about 4,000 more hit points. You have about 500 meters more range. Your torpedoes hit a little bit harder, but you have only three torpedo tubes per side. I think the shores has four. So, mostly minor differences, I suppose. Now, one difference also is your spotting plane. Now, the spotting plane in the lasso lasts for one minute. But it only has a 10 second cooldown. So it's basically an on demand spotting plane that's ready all the time, in a way. Now you can extend the duration with the module, but much, which might actually be a pretty good idea. And yeah, this on demand spotting plane, I kind of like it. It's only up for like a minute, so basically. After that minute, you can decide if you want to continue your spotting plane by launching the next one or not. The 10 second reload is... Yeah. It's almost immediately ready again. I mean, you could even reduce the 10 second reload by... Uh, the one captain's kill there and... A flag, but... Wouldn't really... Make much sense if it's only 10 seconds. Now the 10 second reload time is for the premium spotting plane. I think the regular one has a 15 second reload. More interesting is obviously that you get more charges with the premium consumable. Now I'm running the captain skill superintendent. That gives me an additional spotting plane. So keep that in mind. Superintendent might not be the most useful on this premium ship, but if you're using a captain from another Russian cruiser, you might have it, because Superintendent becomes more interesting once you get a heal at the regular tier cruisers. But anyway, so overall this ship is... Well, it's pretty close to a shores. If you enjoy the shores, you're probably going to enjoy that. And if you are just looking for a premium tier 7 Russian cruiser, then this might make you very happy. And some people don't like it if there is the huge difference between the premiums and the regular tech tree ships. I think this is actually not too bad. Premiums come with the advantage that you can put any captain on it and you can train a captain. You don't need a dedicated captain for this ship, so if you want to keep a tier 7 in your port, you can still use like your Moskva captain, for example. And then there is obviously the increased credit. Well, experience gain. So, I mean... Yeah. It's a decent ship. And we're also getting some lag here when I'm using the spotting plane for whatever reason. Now, looking at the battle as a whole, we have managed to take the C cap, now we are moving in at B. Now, both teams have committed a large force towards the A cap. That's usually a bad thing. But I guess if both teams make a mistake, then I guess it comes down to who makes the bigger one. And the enemy team committed a lot more ships there, and they haven't even taken A. So that's good for us. Now, we control the caps down here. We might even get A right now. 
And who knows? I mean, we don't really have the ships here to really push up here and get a little flanking. I mean, I guess I could go here. Basically, a lasso like the shores. You wanna play at range. You are a very squishy ship. And even though you got a few thousand hit points more, you still don't really wanna be shot at. So you wanna use your range, you wanna stay away from the enemy, and you just wanna damage and burn them. Consumable wise, I've got defensive fire here, you could pick hydro. But it's a ship that you wanna play at range, so you will probably be better off with fire. Now I don't really need the spotting plane here to shoot this Alsace. But I mean, it might help spot any income torpedoes if like this destroyer gets any ideas. And well, it's nice to have a spotting plane that's basically always ready, but keep in mind if you have like six charges and that's with superintendent and it lasts one minute, that's without the module that extends the duration. Then you have like six minutes of uptime in a 20 minute battle, so it's not like you can sail around with a permanent spotting plane. So you still have to decide when you're gonna use it. But if you find yourself in the need of one, it's probably ready. So this battle seems to be going pretty well for us and this poor Kitakas it just ran into a sinking ship and got taken out. And I'm still profiting from this smoke. Like I'm not sitting in it but because the smoke is in between me and the enemies they can't see me. Unfortunately it's now disappearing. So I start to move out here. And look at that, there are some torpedoes coming this way. Now, there is still a fight going on at the A-cap. The enemy team might actually take the A-cap from us at some point. Ship-wise, this isn't very decisive yet. Like, the enemy team could easily flip this. But we have so much more points that if we don't throw this away, we should be fine. And I'm basically doing what you want to do in this ship. You want to stay at range and you want to shoot stuff. Now I'm running IFHD on this captain and well, like the shores. It's a good idea. Because you do have basically the same guns. They just reload like one second longer. So yeah, you lose a bit of DPM. You gain a few other things. I don't think there is that much to say to this ship, it's, well, if you like the shores, you're going to like this ship. If you don't like the shores, then you won't like this ship. And power-wise, it's in a good spot. It does what it should, and while it might not offer anything really exciting for a premium, other than this slightly changed spotter plane, I still think it's uh, reasonable to have, like, a premium version of... A regular ship. Now the George might escape here. I mean he can't really go much further but if he actually hugs the zone wall he might be outside of my range. So I guess the George loads away to sink another day. Now, looking at it ship-wise, we are actually one ship behind now, so it might be time to play this a tiny bit more careful. Now, there is a lightning coming around here. If I can intercept that lightning, it would be great. There is an Alsas duel going on here. Um, how is that going for us? Looking okay, I suppose. Kitakase is providing some fire support there. Now... I'm getting detected by this Alsace, so might have been a good idea to just not shoot because I want to sneak up on this destroyer somehow. But then again, I'm still at full health. And I might want to do some damage to this Sharn horse here because he's getting low. Taking some blind shots, uh, blind shots inside the smoke, and I think I got a hit there. But the enemy is starting to shoot back, and even the destroyer switched to armor piercing, so I got a out angling. Now, British smoke doesn't last for very long, so this lightning got so distracted by shooting me that he 
did not pay attention and I was close enough to spot him once the smoke ran out. Now of course an additional benefit is this little bit of island here so he couldn't torpedo me which means I could just wait here until the smoke ran out sinking and that worked beautifully. Now we are equal on ships but we do have the maturity of the camps get detected here by the shine horse concealment wise this ship has i think 100 meters better concealment than the shore so once again pretty close i think it also goes two knots slower than the shores so yeah you can see most of the stats are pretty similar So the charm host is getting pretty low. I'm hoping that I can set a nice fire here, but so far does look like it. I have the monarch here with me. Now the monarch might also try to set a fire. And the monarch is actually going towards the charm host. So he might be absorbing a bit of damage from me. But then again, I don't think the charm host will stop shooting me. I'm just too juicy of a target. Well, meanwhile, the enemy still have a Miyoko that I don't know what he is doing. They have the George who was almost sunk. I mean, we still have a destroyer remaining. It's unlikely that they can hunt down our destroyer. So this should be a win for us here. Charnhorst is going down and... I mean, at this point, I could just sail into a corner, I suppose, and wait for us to win. I'm getting low on hit points, but... I couldn't just join in the fun and shoot the Miyoko here. So yeah, I could, I probably should have done this when the ship was still less damaged. I've unlocked the camera right now. It has an interesting camo pattern that you can't really see right now because my ship is so damaged. With like those wave-like forms, I guess. And, well, keep in mind this ship is a work in progress, so anything you see here is subject to change. So, by now only the George is remaining, and obviously we are going to win this. Well, here we are with the results, so uh, had a pretty decent game, I suppose, for a tier 7 in a tier 9 battle. And yeah, the lasso, it's kind of a premium shores. I don't see much need for change, but keep in mind it's still a work in progress, so anything could happen. And yeah, hope you enjoyed watching this, and I'll see you guys next time.